Hey guys, this is Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and today is day 21 in our 30 tips in 30 days video series. Now when it comes to photo compositing, there's tons of stuff that I could show you guys. But today, I want to show you how you can retain the original shadows from a photo when swapping out one background for another. In this lesson, I'm going to show you guys so you can take the original shadows from your image and carry them with your subject over into another image. It's basically a uh, photo compositing trick, but it's something that I think you guys would enjoy. Um, so here I've got my image of a breakdancer open and ready to go, and I've already made a selection in the paths palette that I can use to uh, isolate him from the background. Now I've showed a few different ways to do this in some of my other videos, but uh, the way that I did this particular one was just using the pen tool. And I did that because you can save your paths in a, in a JPEG file. So um, that means having a much smaller file than, let's say, you know, using a mask and having to save a PSD file. So um, especially for this, because it's not too complex, uh, it works really well. So hold down the Command key and click on your work path, and then return to your Layers palette. And with your background layer selected, press Command J to put that layer on a, on a layer of its own. All right, so now you've got the dancer separate from the background. Okay, but what about the shadows? So we're going to make another copy of the background and press Command L to bring up our levels adjustments. From here, we just really want to try to enhance the contrast as much as we can um, by moving the sliders in towards the middle. And one other thing that we're going to do is desaturate the image. The shortcut for that is Command Option U on the keyboard and then just move the saturation uh, slider all the way to the left like that. Okay, and now I'm just gonna quickly grab my lasso tool and pretty much get the whole top of this image here and fill it with white. Okay, so you could do that again either by using your paint bucket tool or if white is set as your foreground color, all you have to do is press Alt, Option, and Delete on your keyboard to fill that selection with your foreground color. Okay, now the next thing is, you know, what do we do? You know, you still see the guy's hands and the top of his head. We can use the selection that we've already created by holding down Command and clicking on the layer thumbnail. And then on the background copy, go ahead and fill that with white as well. Now the last thing that we need to do here is um, kind of get rid of some of these grays and these midtone values, right? We don't want to see a hard line here where the floor is. So all you're going to do is press uh, O on the keyboard to get your dodge tool or you can come over and select it manually. Now I'm using a soft edged uh, brush here with an exposure of about 80 percent and I also have the protect tones uh, box checked off. Now normally this wouldn't be uh, too big of a deal and it's actually you know kinda nice because the photo that we're putting this into does have some texture on the ground as well so it could look pretty nice to, to blend it in um, but there are times where you're not going to want this texture here. And I'll show you guys how you can get rid of that. Alright, so once you've kind of, you know, faded this out, so you're left mostly with just the shadow and, you know, a little bit of the ground, um, the next thing you're going to want to do is apply a little bit of a blur. Okay, so let's come up here to the filter menu and choose blur. And for this we're going to use a surface blur. Okay, and that's going to basically blur out uh, some of the, the textures and the, the smaller details. You know, but it, it makes it pretty soft, so, you know, you can play around with this, you know, the radius and the threshold settings until you get something that you like. Something around there I think looks pretty good. And then from there, we're just going to take both of these layers, the dancer and the shadow, hold down the shift key so you have them both selected, and then we're going to hold down the shift key once again and drag them both into our new document. Alright, so here I kind of already had this background image uh, planned out that I was going to use. And I'm just going to call this layer Shadows. And this layer is just going to be called uh, Dancer. So select your Shadows layer and just change the mode, the blending mode to Multiply. Alright, and then you may have to nudge the Dancer down a little bit. But as you can see, you know, that shadow looks much more realistic than, you know, what I see people do sometimes is just, you know, take the, uh, the circle tool right here and fill it with black and, 
you know, then they can do a Gaussian blur or something like that and, you know, call it a day. And, you know, that doesn't really look too good. I don't think that looks very realistic, at least not as realistic as the original shadows. But, you know, you could always add it as an extra shadow, um, you know, if you wanted to enhance it a little bit more. Sure, but I think if it's, you know, the only shadow in the image, then it should be a little bit more realistic and convincing, especially if you're doing, uh, you know, higher-end uh, photo composites. All right, so I'm going to uh, double-click the background layer to unlock it. And now, you know, obviously there's some other stuff that we could do here, but, you know, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'd like to try and keep it pretty short, so I'm just going to make a few adjustments really quick. And one thing that we're going to do is try and match the uh, color temperature of the background uh, along with our figure. So what I've done is created a duplicate of the background layer and moved it to the top of the layers palette. From here I'm going to do a filter, blur, surface blur like we did in the previous step. I'm just gonna you know make it really blurry because essentially we just want to get the overall tone or uh, you know maybe one or two colors from the background. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, we're going to let that do its thing. And then once you've done that, uh, you'll see that you've just got you know a really hazy version of this background layer. So what we're going to do is hold down the command key and select the dancer and then apply a layer mask so that uh, the background is only visible you know inside of the dancer. Next, uh, change the blending mode from normal to color. And so now you've just got you know that color information inside of the, the dancer here. But it's not exactly what we want, so we're just going to lower the opacity a little bit. And you'll see that it's kind of adding a little bit of a, a yellowish tint here that, you know, makes it more convincing because it's, you know, picking up that color from the walls and the background and everything. Alright, and one more thing that I want to do real quick is just add a curves adjustment layer above the original background layer. Alright, because we want to try to have, you know, roughly the same amount of contrast in the background and the foreground. Something like that. Okay, and then you know you may want to play around with the positioning a little bit more just to try and match the perspective. Although I just forgot to grab that top layer. So make sure you have all your layers selected or you can always you know select them all, hold down control, and then do link layers. So now it'll keep all those layers together when you have them selected. This guy's all over the place man. Alright, so there you go. That's pretty much how, how it works, and I may revisit this one later uh, in a future tutorial to show you guys uh, some other cool things you can do here, but uh, for now, I think this is looking pretty good for just a few minutes, and um, all I did there was just, you know, use a gradient to mask out the top of the, uh, the image and the curves. But that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I hope that you found this video useful, and if you liked it, uh, please sign up for our newsletter and give us a thumbs up and help spread the word and let us know how we can help you design better.